Hello and welcome to High School Playoff Basketball on WOSN. Alongside Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're in Elida for a big time district semifinal between the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans and the Parkway Lady Panthers. Jerry, excited to be with you. Now, I know you're a sports guy, it doesn't matter what the sport is, but for me, it doesn't get any better than this time of year, playoff basketball, and hey, I love it here in this setting. Oh, I tell you what, this setting, you hit it right. There's nothing better. There's, you know, you say Elida and everybody in this area and broad area talk about tournament time. And again, the weather's different. Everything about it, it's tournament time. Yeah, absolutely. The starting lineup's getting red for you. We'll start by talking about the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans, a team that comes into this evening as, I would say, on paper favorites. This is a program that has been in this district, gone deep into this district many, many, many times. And their starting lineup consists of Carson Erford, Charlie Brinkman, Carly Brinkman, excuse me, Katie Kaufman, Micah Aldrich, and Caitlin Kimmett. And on the other side, the Parkway Lady Panthers, they start with Brittany Bruns, Audrey Nichols, Adria Miller, Paige Williamson, and Megan Hughes. It's Parkway wearing the black uniforms tonight. And Ottawa Glandorf in the white as we are about ready to kick off this first quarter. Sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Underway here in Elida Parkway with the bass. I'm sorry, the Titans with the basketball moving it around the perimeter. You know, something I really noticed when I was watching Parkway is they really play good on the ball defense. I think you'll keep the ball in front of them, don't allow a lot of penetration, and again, they're gonna have to contend with Katie Kaufman on the inside. First shot of the game missed. The Follow-up effort missed as well. So score remains 0-0 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. We'll tell you more about them later on, but right now it's Parkway on offense. Three-pointer on the way. It's high, but it's no good. Rebound tipped out to the Titans. Aldrich, the other way, her pass goes out of bounds, so it'll go back to Parkway. You know, one thing that we, we can tell it here, I don't know if our cameras are catching it, but kind of an oversight, I think a little bit, is the sun there coming <laughs> in. Tough. And you know, that's coming off the floor as well. Could have a little bit of effect on that end of the floor. That's Ottawa Glando for the offensive end right now. Yeah, so I imagine for the next 30 to 45 minutes, that sun is going to be brutal heading that way. Score still 0-0, ball out to the corner, three on the way. It's off the back, no good. Offensive rebound pulled in, though, by Miller. That ball heads out of bounds. So both teams a little bit sloppy early on here, trying to get their feet underneath them. You know, and, and as I think a lot of Parkway, the Panthers, uh, Audrey, Audrey and Miller, I think, really makes them go. She's a good on-the-ball defender. I mentioned they all are. Again, you wouldn't expect this out of a guard. She's a very good rebounder. I think leads the team in rebounding, actually. Miller got on the floor for a loose ball there, and now an unforced error as the ball goes right through the hands of Carly Brinkman. Parkway will get it back. We're a minute and a half in here with no score. I think this will be a big test for the Panthers, too. You know, Ottawa Glandorf, such good pressure all year long. And sooner or later, it's one of those that just takes its toll. Certainly two good defenses up against each other this evening. Parkway working on the perimeter. Here's Bruns. Now Megan Hughes puts up a shot. That's no good. Hughes averages eight points a game. And now a foul inside as Kaufman will get called for the block. Right now, Parkway doing a good job on the offensive glass. I've always said, you know, when you, you talk about keys to a game, I don't think there's any, any game I've ever done that I don't include rebounding as one of the keys. Right. I think it plays such a key role in, in all games. You sound like every coach that's ever given a locker room <laughs> talk at halftime, right? Ball on the perimeter. Sent to the outside with Brittany Bruns. Bruns lost the handle. Pressured by Megan Horstman of the Titans. Now that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Panthers. You know, I mentioned uh, Parkway's on the ball defense, but you know, that's something too. Megan Horstman and also the guards for OG have done so well all year long. 
And it seems like the Titans, every single year, they'll graduate one or two great guards, right. and it will feel like they, they don't even miss them. And, and I don't mean that in a personal way, but right. I mean no, that on no. the court. A new player or a couple of new players always stepping into the limelight. And you know what? That's what a good program does. Mm. You know, you come in with expectations, and, you know, they honor the past, but it's their turn. To the baseline goes Carly Brinkman up and in for the first basket of the evening. It took almost three minutes, but we have a two on the scoreboard, and it goes to the Titans. Ball passed outside. It's Audrey Nichols. It's Miller picking up her dribble. They go inside, and that's a dangerous place to yes, be against the Titans. You see the big arm of Kaufman closing out on that shooter, and now Parkway playing patiently to their credit. They are, and they move the ball so well. This is Bruns. Gives it out to Megan Hughes, and Hughes fires in a shot. Good old left-handed shot there. So Hughes with her first bucket of the evening. Again, she averages eight points per game for the Panthers, a team that only has one player that averages double figures. That's Paige Williamson averaging 13 points. That's one of the things that, you know, they're 17 and 6 on the year, and five and four in the MAC, but they've played some teams tough. Minster, they played real tough. You look at their scores, you know, even in the losses, they've played very well and very close. And anytime you hear Mac, you know that yeah. there's some toughness out there as the three goes from Carson Erford. Erford averaging 12 points per game. She shoots 36% from outside. 5-2, the Titans lead. Parkway loses it. Brinkman takes it away. Quick pass ahead looking for Megan Horstman. It's ultimately tracked down by Micah Aldrich. She'll turn to look to shoot, but instead give it to Erford. Well, they're really trying to take advantage of, you know, getting out and going with it. Pull up jump shot, no good. Parkway with the rebound, trailing 5-2. Just over three to play in the first quarter. Evan Skilleter, Jerry Snodgrass with you on the mics. Jacob O'Neill on the camera, high above the Union Bank court here in Elida. Three-pointer on the way, splash! Wow. Paige Williamson, the leading scorer on this team, 37% from outside, and you can see why there. Ties this game at five. Brinkman has some space and the answer. Well, that just went against my thought that the sun might hurt them a little <laughs> bit. She was looking right into it. Titans back in the lead, eight to five. Ball handed to Bruns. Bruns gets a screen. Tries to pass, but it's tipped away. And that's what the Titans do well is those active hands, and they yeah. turn defense into offense as yeah. Erford knocks it in. And they get it out and go. 10-5 now the lead. Almost another steal. In fact, it is, and quickly the other way. Brinkman tracks it down. Brinkman goes we'll up and scores. Yep. 12 to 5 and a big run from the Ottawa Glendorf Titans as Parkway takes a timeout with 201 on the clock. Your timeouts are sponsored by Loudix Jewelry. We'll step aside. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Back to action here in Elida as the Titans go on a quick 7-0 run and lead this one 12-5 with 2.01 to go and a good timeout from Parkway. Yeah, yeah, I think Carly Brinkman's getting a little bit of a break there. She's been running the court, you know, again, a credit, you know, her seven points, but credit, uh, you really have to credit uh, their defense getting those. Right now, I mean, you, you look at Katie Kaufman normally as the defensive anchor, yeah. but it's the perimeter defenders that are doing the work here. And there as was they a force great a turnover. denial on that perimeter defense right there. Credit that to Savannah Recker. So just came into the game. So the Titans get it back here. Ball swung around. It's Erford. 
now Olivia Grothaus sends it to the top. Good patient possession from the Titans. They can run on you, but they'll slow it down at times they too can. and look for their shot. Erford misses, but the offensive rebound goes to Grothaus. And Grothaus powers her way up and draws the foul. That's where the offensive rebounding really hurts you. So the foul called against Paige Williamson. It's her first, first against Parkway. And that'll be two Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throws for Olivia Grothaus, Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken where home style happens here. Here's where they're dangerous too, you know, make or miss on a free throw. You'll even see them jump in that press right away even on a miss. But make or miss, you'll probably see them and they'll probably prove me wrong, but they usually get right into that press. And they haven't had many chances to press so far this afternoon. Now they'll inbound against the press. Will Parkway ends up being a man press as Bruns brings it down. Ball inside, maybe a chance. Nope, sent outside. Bruns, her pass taken away. I think she was looking to the corner, but her teammate was cutting. Kimmett took it away, and Kimmett was fouled. It's a good call out there. You know, a lot of people wouldn't have seen that, but it did cause the ball to go out of bounds, and she did get her on the arm. But you know, there's no, no easy passes right now. We talked about Parkway being such a good passing team, but every pass is contended, and even when they drive into the lane, they're running into some big timber in there. Your referees for this first game are Mike Basinger, Aaron Braun, and Ben Kramer. Three good longtime officials. We're blessed in this area with Did we ever say that as great, coaches? great officials. Not as coaches. Yeah. Dependent I, at the end of the game, I guess. Very but. rarely will compliment them at the end of the game. But <laughs> they really deserve it. They outside are Outside of the gym, maybe. Maybe. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. They have a tough job. And without them, we wouldn't have high school hoops. That's right. Kimmett outside to Erford. Pardon me. That was Brinkman. But now a pull-up jumper by Grothaus. No good. That little four or five-footer right there, I think, is one of the toughest shots in basketball. Good left nice hand. Nice left-handed wow. layup by Micah Aldrich. Drove into traffic and found the angle and got it. It is 16 to 5. Titans lead by 11. Inside go the Panthers. Shot no good. Offensive rebound and putback is good though. And that will end the first quarter. The Titans. With an early lead, 16 to 7 as we head to break. We'll be back with more high school playoff basketball after this on WOSN. Tonight's three-pointers are sponsored by Simplified Flooring. Simplified Flooring, we make flooring simple. Welcome back. A couple of those Simplified flooring three-pointers in the first quarter. I'm just going to say thank you, Simplified Flooring, because we've had three of them so far. Now Parkway back to work, trailing 16-7 to after a nice run in the middle of that first quarter for the Titans. And now doing what they did in the first. They are suffocating Parkway outside, looking for a five-second yep, call. There it yep. is. Carson Erford suffocating Bryn Shanelebin. And right now, that, that really is the story right now. Otto Glendorf's defense, been stellar. They lead 16 to seven, and you're right. A lot of those first quarter points came from steals and buckets in transition as Kimmett got that one tied up on her hip and called for the travel. Both teams using their benches pretty well. Pace hasn't been outrageous or anything, but... Well, it seems know. especially important for the Titans, too, a team that pressures up top and they run at the full court in transition right. often. Well, you know, too, Evan, that's something they've done all year long, too. And you talked earlier about younger players coming on, you know, when somebody graduates. Well, that's part of the reason why. And now a timeout taken by Parkway as Brittany Bruns was on the floor. We'll take it, too, with 7.07 .07 to go here in the second quarter. It's 16 to 7, Titans lead.
Tonight's timeouts are sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. And Loudix also sponsoring our quarters tonight. Loudix, your second quarter sponsor. Visit them in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Welcome back after that Loudix timeout by Parkway. You know, I mentioned earlier, you know, Parkway losses, you know, to some good teams. There's another turnover. And again, they they can ill afford that. But you look at Ottawa Glander with two losses on the year. They're 21 and two overall. Their two losses are two pretty darn good teams. Lost to Port Laramie and lost to Toledo Central Catholic late in the year. Two teams that will probably make their own exactly deep runs right. in the playoffs. Erford spins off a defender, not able to finish off glass. Rebound pulled in by Miller. But two, you know, I look at their schedule and that's what I like about coaches. And I think sometimes when you're there a long time, you can afford to do that a little bit more. But at the same time, they play tough competition. And again, that just says something about the culture of Ottawa Glandorf. You know, that they're willing to risk a loss, you know, I mean, to play somebody good. And you see that in both boys and girls, yes, not to sure take do. anything away from the girls. The no, boys get a lot no. of attention themselves, but you know that's a team, the boys that played in Lexington last week against a really, really yes. good Division II team and ended up with a win right yeah. before playoff time. That certainly helps when you're looking at the playoffs and looking at what you'll see. That's, I think, been, I think that's Katie Kaufman's first shot of the night. You might be right they've about really, that. She hasn't they've taken really many. smothered her inside. The ball goes out of bounds. Parkway will turn it over once again. Parkway's just struggling to really get anything going. But again, it's not because of their poor play. It's the, just the very, very strong defensive effort of out of Glendorf. You know, Evan, you mentioned that, you know, about the, the st schedules and strength of them. And, you know, that's something I really believe. We went to 22 games a few years ago. I think that kind of changed the mindset. You know, what they'll they'll play with two extra games. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll schedule somebody really good like that, and they'll risk a loss. They don't go into it expecting to lose, but let's let's pay better competition and we'll get better. Absolutely. And I think that in high school basketball, not only playing good competition is good for you, but what I've noticed throughout my years of broadcasting is when you, and coaching, when you're able to play physical, tough teams that are that they're hard to navigate around, they're hard to maneuver around, they're hard to game plan yes. for. Those are so good yep. for you as a team and to develop some of your players. It's, we got a foul on the floor. That was on, I believe it was, it was on Audrey Nichols, I think. You know, I saw that the other night. I watched the uh, Defiance Upper Sandusky boys game. And you know, Defiance playing in a league, WPL and Upper Sandusky playing in a you know, smaller, you know, much, much smaller league. The Mohawks, the Carries, the Seneca East. And you could just tell the physicality of it, you mm. know, made the difference in the ball game. And you could say it was an upset with Defiance winning. They were a much lower seed, but there's another turnover. But in, in all fairness, I mean, you could just tell the physical strength was the difference in the game. It wasn't the skill level. Yet another Parkway turnover, so the Titans will take it back. Aldrich comes up to grab it, but gives it right back to Olivia Grothaus. Ball inside. It's Aldrich, the quick turn, the quick score. Four points for Michael Aldrich as she extends the lead to 18-7 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And their points off turnovers are just amazing right now. The shot from outside. That one's no good. Not someone they want to get going. Paige Williamson, just three points so far this evening. Here's a three on the other end. Oh, that boy. goes Caitlin Kimmett with the big simplified flooring three-pointer. Not much you can do defensively. I mean, you're there. You're there. It's just, you, know, yeah, you have to credit the good skill level of Otto Glandorf. Football score now 21 to seven. Parkway trails by two touchdowns and two extra points. <laughs> Ball to the wing. It's Bruns, Bruns outside. Three on the way. Williamson got there that we one. Go. A Loudix three. I'm sorry, a simplified flooring three. That's her second three of the night. 
she's been a very, very good outside shooter all year. She has 73 on the on the year, 73 threes. Brittany Bruns has 18. Somehow Aldrich kept her foot there, but not able to score on the off-balance attempt. Yeah, you're right. When you can shoot that many threes and still shoot at a 37% success rate, right. that's not bad, Mr. Snodgrass. That one floated up and in. And Williamson starting to heat up a bit now with eight points. 21-12 to score. Grothaus inside. She can't score. Megan Hughes the rebound. Hughes, her pass tipped away. Grabbed by Brunt. Rapid pace now for Parkway. Another one from Williamson. That's no good. They fight for the rebound, but Parkway grabs it. That shot no good. And that's where that height advantage by Ottawa Glando from that inside. You know, anything inside just has a lot of contended, you know, a lot of arms in the way. Yeah, they're super, super tough as you've got 6'1", Katie Kaufman inside. You've got 5'10", Yeah, Caitlin we're going to see a foul on the inside any time here. Three on the way from Kimmett. That time no good. Although I give a lot of credit to Parkway on that. Very good check out on that backside. Parkway fighting hard here. Bruns brings it down the floor and sets things up. Pass to the corner. It's Shane Levin. Kind of challenging Bruns to shoot from the, the top. Lost the handle. You know, you look at, I look at uh, Brittany. Uh, Britain uh, Bruns out there, and boy, the pressure she's under, that's hard for a player. Asking a lot of her to do that. We have a foul underneath the second of the game, or excuse me, the second of the quarter against the Titans. As a host of substitutes check into this game, Carson Erford checks in as well as Carly Brinkman and Megan Horstman. Ball up top, and immediately an imp the impact from Carly Brinkman is felt as she steals it. She goes to the hoop, but loses her balance. Now a jump ball underneath. Possession stays with Parkway. Pace of this game has picked up a it bit It has, here. you know, and I think, you know, for Parkway, hitting a couple threes, hitting a couple good shots inside there, they're clawing their way back into it. Ball up over the top. Erford, right hand, scoops, no score. Williamson with the rebound, and she hurries the other way. She got a one on four. She gets it back, quick trigger, shot no good. And that one stays here now on a jump ball. It does indeed, nice job there on the offensive rebound. I believe it was Audrey Nichols inside. 136 on the clock. You know, pretty balanced scoring, as you mentioned earlier, you know, from Parkway, but just about every one of their players can hit from three, and they take a lot of them. They're outside now, working to set something up. Brittany Bruns. Hughes passes back to Bruns. That's Williamson, excuse me. Here's Megan Hughes inside, and the ball knocked away. Maybe took too much time there as Kimmett knocks it away and goes quickly to the other end as Brinkman with the layup. You know, that all started with, believe it or not, a good catch on that pass. If she was contended, she had to go up and get it. Good backdoor cut. Too much body that time from Kaufman. She tacked with the foul. That's her second foul, excuse me. And we will have two least famous recipe chicken free throws. That's something Parkway's going to have to do. You know, they, this might be their first trip to the line, but either way, they're going to have to take advantage of those freebies. Shane Lebin, a 52% free throw shooter. Gets one of two there. Ten point lead for the Titans, 23-13. First basket for Shane Lebin. I don't think they'll be content with just one. We'll see, but they've been playing at a pretty fast pace. And if it's there, they're going to take it. And there we go. Nice closeout and block, though. Williamson knocks it away, gets the rebound. 30 seconds on the clock. And while it's a low-scoring game, Parkway 
and their defense has really kept them in this. It has. When you've only scored 13 heading into the locker room, normally that's not a good sign. No. Just a 10-point lead, a chance to cut into it more before the half. That's frustrating as a player, though. You know, nothing is easy. You know, you're working out, you're working and working, and just nothing easy. And just as you said right there, nothing easy as Erford shot well after the buzzer. And that will do it for the first half. 23-13 Titans with a 10-point lead. We'll be back in a bit with the second half after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. And tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome. Kevin, I'm going to I'm going to Lee's to get chicken, and I'm going to Ultimate Outdoor to get patio furniture because the weather's supposed to be in the 70s. Hey, the next week. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than that as we are back underway here in the third quarter from Elida, Ottawa, Glandorf, leading Parkway 23-13 in tonight's district semifinal. The first of two we'll have for you. The next one will be following this one against or between Allen East and Delphi Saint. I'm sorry, Delphus Jefferson. Yeah, and you know, Evan, I think we know the story of that first half. You know, the 12 turnovers by uh, Parkway, and so many of those turned into scores. And you know what? A lot of the shots you could almost count as turnovers because they were so pressured and so quick to take them. So that's been the story of the first half. Tremendous defense on both ends of the floor, forcing tons of turnovers. There's one yeah. right there, so make it 13 turnovers for Parkway. now. Ottawa Glandorf, only three turnovers, and all of those were dead ball turnovers. And yeah. I know you were a coach. There's a big difference between live ball and dead ball there turnovers. Sure is. As live ball turnovers generally turn into baskets at the other end, and that's what we've seen from the Titans offense a lot tonight. Thing is, I, I love the way Parkway plays defense. I just think they play tough. I think they, I mean. Kaufman working her tail off inside. He tried to get a call on the first one, didn't get it, but still got the rebound and put in the second effort. And she will have a least famous recipe chicken free throw. Well, we talked, you know, something I really admire about her is, you know, she. we said in the first quarter, I think she only touched the ball once, but she just stuck with it. You don't see any emotion out of her, you know, to like, get me the ball, get me the ball. But she just keeps after it like she did right there. First free throw good for the leading scorer on this squad. Second one goes as well. Kaufman averages 13.1 points per game, a 57% free throw shooter. Now the other way, Williamson draws the block. Williamson had a slow start in this game, but went on a nice little run by herself. Sits with eight points to lead all Parkway scores. Ball sent outside for Parkway. Three from the wing. And yeah. the Titans have been trying to coax that shot all evening. Yeah. They finally do. And they coaxed her into taking that one. 12 point lead for the Titans. They have the basketball. Carly Brinkman on the wing. Inside goes Erford. Kaufman kind of camped out down there in the lane. She gets the ball, three defenders, and she's going to have two least famous recipe chicken free throws. Well, you know, that's something that definitely was talked about at halftime. You know, let's, let's do go inside. Let's make them foul us, and that really will open up the perimeter as a result. That's the way it works. Kaufman misses that one. Katie Kaufman has been playing important basketball for the Titans for four years now. You know, I mentioned, you know, Troy Yant and, the, you know, Ottawa Glandorf coaching and all that, but 
something I'm, I'm really impressed with Dan Williamson and, and Parkway Panthers in their ability to box out. They're very fundamental, extremely fundamental. And they actually out-rebounded the Titans 15-10 yep. to 10 in the first half. Here's Bruns. Bruns into some trouble in the lane. Outside quick trigger three. That's no good. But I'll tell you what, I am so impressed with Williamson's footwork on yes. her three-pointers as she gets set every single time she shoots. And now we'll have free throws for Parkway. Megan Hughes will go to the line. I was watching one of their games on tape. And you know, they set up a play where they take a ball out of bounds on the side, and Williamson takes it out, gets it past. She steps in bounds on that side and hits it. Mm. You know, so I mean, they set her up for a lot of those threes. As I mentioned earlier, she's hit 73 on the year. Hughes gets one of two Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws to go. Five points for her. 25-14, 11-point lead for the Titans. They go inside to Kaufman, and Kaufman doesn't care that there's three around her. She's going to go toward the hole, and she's going to draw a foul. If I didn't know any better, I think I would have heard coming out. Of, I would have heard, listened to the locker room at halftime, and we are going inside. I think they've gone inside on every possession, you know, this half so far. And they go back to Kaufman. She sends it out, tries to repost. They're still looking in there, aren't they? Yep. And Parkway still making it tough to get it there as they get a steal. This is a live ball turnover, but great defense on the other end. Caitlin Kimmett walls up and knocks it away. You know, Parkway did do a great job of dropping that guard inside and, you know, fronting her when it looked like it was open. You'll see that again, you know. They'll... Brinkman dribbles up. She'll set something up with a four high look for the Titans. Erford, back to Brinkman. And Kimmett's fouled as Adria Miller tries to reach around and get the ball. Stead gets arm, and we're already at four fouls here in the quarter. Yeah, you notice how it, it's been very hard to get a flow of the game by either team. Sure. And part of that is defensive pressure is so much. You know, a foul kind of disrupts everything there, you know. There have been a couple fast breaks early in the game, but the flow of the game is so – that's frustrating sometimes as a coach. You just can't get in the flow. You know what I think it is, Jerry? I think it's the rule change to five fouls per quarter. I think it is too. Teams are more – Interested in fouling, we're yep. willing to foul. They're not as worried yep. about fouling, and so they're a little more aggressive, and things will really slow down. How about that step through and score by Carson Erford? Seven points for Erford. Just a sophomore doing such a great job for this squad. I'm curious your take on that five foul rule. I'm sure we'll have some time to talk about it here later as that there three go. goes. It's Williamson again. She's up to 11 points. Back to a 10 point game. And the travel from Erford is, she gets ahead of herself trying to drive to her left. You know, you mentioned that about the foul fouls, you know, per quarter. And when that came about, I thought, a lot of people don't realize that's a national rule uh, by all high schools. And as long as you follow national playing rules, which all but one state does. But anyhow, I just, I thought, well, I'm going to have to wait and see how that is. And I don't like what happens at the end of the game. You know, they've, you know, they're just burning fouls if you're, if, you know, sure. if you've one or two fouls in that fourth quarter. And I think that really disrupts a lot of things. And I think it changes the complexion of things. There's one. Another three. Paige Williamson heating up as she gets her team back to within seven. And now the Titans may be feeling a little pressure that yeah. they haven't felt for a couple quarters. You know, and, and they pick her up a little higher. That opens up that lane a little bit, which was so troublesome in the first half for Parkway. Here's Brinkman. Titans trying to slow down this run a bit. Brinkman uses the body. Again, there's the, the rebound. There's the great defensive rebounding by Parkway. Dribbling down is Bruns, but she loses the handle. Titans coming the other way. Now up the floor. Inside, and Great Roadhouse move. with Great the finish. Move. 
little hesitation to get through that gap and score. Bruns now. Here's Hughes. Hughes misses the shot. Rebound pulled in by Megan Horstman. Grothaus, Erford, Brinkman. Coach wanted a timeout, but the pass was already in the air, and Parkway takes it away. Yeah, and again, with that flow of the game, OG, you know, started to break away from things, but they just can't, you know? And credit, good defense by Parkway. Good shooting. Inside goes Bruns. Tough shot, no good. Grothaus slid over to help in defense, but the rebound from Hughes, and the putback goes. Hughes now with seven, one away from her average of eight. And a timeout taken by Coach Yamp. Parkway starting to climb back into it, making some noise. 29-22, the Titans lead to 11 in the third quarter. Tonight's timeouts are sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. And tonight's three-point sponsor is Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. A bunch of those Simplified Flooring threes for Paige Williamson here in the third quarter. She has 14 points. And this came back to within seven points. Loudest timeout taken there by Coach Yant, just trying to slow some things down. Yeah, and look at that help Kaufman on the inside, in. yeah. Erford dribbles inside around three defenders. Can't score, but pulls down the rebound herself. Erford taking her time, probing the defense. Now Kaufman dribbles her way inside, lost the handle. Now steps in, and no good on the shot. Rebound tipped around, and it will go to Parkway. Boy, she had to fight for everything on that. But again, give Parkway a lot of credit for just sticking in there. They're outsized in there. You know, Evan, I, and, and this might be a stretch when I say this. You talk about that five foul rule. You know, I, you know, I wonder too. You know, in the course of the game, they're not going to go to the foul line. You know, like until the fifth foul. So. It's like some things just aren't called. Let them play. Mm, okay. You know, and it just yeah. seems like a lot of games I've seen have been so physical. And I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just that, you know, you hear people say, let them play. Well, they are. Sure. And I'm, say I'm not saying that is any disrespect to the officials on how they're calling games. I think it's just a kind of a natural tendency. Let them play. Mm. That three That's goes from Erford, another big simplified flooring three. That's her second three of the night, and much needed. Lead back out to 10 on the ultimate scoreboard. Inside, go Parkway. How about that shot? Bryn Shanelebin. That's a tough lefty hook. Wow, nice little move inside. Erford thought about a three. Now goes to the corner. Kaufman posting up. Yant wants the last one. Yep. Coach Yant says, hold on. 32 seconds, but Parkway pressuring high. Now Aldrich, another player that's played significant minutes for this team for all four years that she's been in this program. Fifteen now on the clock. Kimmett over to Horstman. Now Erford, Erford just one dribble, pops the three off the glass, no good. Two on the clock, one, zero, and that shot is no good. 32-24, the Titan lead as the third quarter ends. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this. It's high school playoff basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. 
The start of the fourth quarter here in Elida, 32-24. The Titans on top of Parkway, and I'll tell you what, Jerry Snodgrass, this is a scrappy Parkway team. Yes, it is. I can see, I mentioned earlier how many teams, the Minsters, uh, you know, teams that, and that they've played so tough, and I can see why. All the way to the rack, but no good. A nice take from Paige Williamson off the screen of Aubrey Nip Nichols. Excuse me, that's Audrey Nichols. I mentioned it earlier. I, I love the way they're coached. They, they just, I think they're so fundamental. They play hard, they're aggressive. Ball swung around now. Brinkman was open, but didn't want to shoot. No. Nothing to shoot what? for at this point. She wants to make sure that her team has possession. First foul of the quarter now called. But you know, I like that. You know, during that quarter break, they came out at that time. You know, they were posting up Kate, uh, Carson Erford, you know, and kind of like that. You know, they switch it up a little bit. Let, let's bring uh, Katie Kaufman outside a little bit on that offensive set. Let's post up somebody else, especially Erford's very strong in there with the ball. And by the way, only a sophomore. Foul called inside on Kaufman. That's her third. Parkway will go the full length of the court against this press. It's a man-to-man -man press as the ball comes in for Bruns and everyone backs off. Bruns nice and quick, brings it down the court. Williamson. Miller. See, I, I think that's a double dribble. I, I've seen that a lot. Apparently it, is, it isn't anymore, but boy, I, you know. The, I've seen it called a couple yeah, times this year, but nice more move. times than not, it is not called a double dribble. And that one is out, last touched by Parkway. But again, you see the effort. Two girls yep. getting on the ground, trying to get a possession back for their team. Well, you, you can just look at the, you know, the pace isn't so fast up and down, but you look at the, the fatigue look on the players, and it's just because it's so physical, the amount of effort it requires. And these refs are certainly keeping a tight grip on this game as there is another foul called inside. A two against Parkway, that's called on Nichols. It's her second. Ball in for Carly Brinkman. There's Kimmett. Brinkman gets the screen from Kaufman, but dribbles off her foot as it goes out of bounds, and it's last touched by the Titans. I don't think Miss Hughes knew that as Megan Hughes yeah, was about to dive right. on the floor for the ball. Now Hughes brings it up. Yeah, look, look at how they're guard, guarding Williamson right now. They won't leave her. They were in her face from the moment on this end of the court. Carly Brinkman guarding her tightly, and that's one of the best defenders on the soccer field in the state of Ohio. Yes. So imagine the yep. work that she can do here in the gym. Carly Brinkman and a very successful Titans soccer team. I was telling somebody that the other day about the OG girls players, you know, how many of them are soccer players, you know, and how, you know, what it does for them, I think. I, more than anything, competition. Absolutely. Competition, physicality, and conditioning. Coming into the season, the soccer players always seem to have the upper hand as that soccer player nails the three. She's been avoiding shooting them all night, but finally puts one up and puts it in. A simplified flooring three for Carly Brinkman. And Parkway keeps possession as that one was tipped out of bounds. The OG lead up to 11 points on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. Britton Bruns, I will tell you, is going to need an unbelievable rest at the end of this game. Bringing the ball up. You wouldn't think that what a challenge that is physically, but it sure has been. And against tight defense, there's a lot of change of pace. There's yep. a lot of left to right rather than forward and backward. And you're, you're absolutely right. It can take its toll. She's done a really nice job she has. tonight. That's Britton Bruns, the sophomore. Shot hey, up and how in. How about that? She was listening, I think. She deserved that one. First bucket of the evening for Bruns. Back to nine. Titans patiently wait. Erford. 
Kaufman thought about backing it in. And against that pressure, they're doing a good job of not forcing anything. It's just like right there. Erfer backs it out, resets. Let's get a better one. Erford, you can see her. Yep. She's gassed. She's right in front of us. Bending over. Inside goes Aldrich. Turns, fires it up, and over the glass. And I'll tell you once again, you I, I'm over saying it, but you have to credit the Parkway defense mm -hmm. for that. Up the court comes Paige Williamson. In trouble now is Nichols. She's able to get it to Bruns. I don't want to jinx them, but Parkway's done such a better job hanging on to the ball this half, too. Mm. Very good point. Offensively trying to dig into this nine-point Titan lead. Hughes takes a bump, passes outside. It's a good patient possession, but yeah, it is. you wonder how patient Parkway right. really can be at this point. Basket's not easy to come by, and that's why. Maybe a touch there from Kaufman. And look at that. How often do you see a big go between a double team, dribble all the way up the court, yep. and break the press? And did a good job of dishing off rather than going. She's a little out of control right at the end there with bodies in front of her. Erford. Coach Yant still coaching up his girls. What a fantastic guy, fantastic yep. coach. Has built a great program. And hear him. I can hear him with the headset on. He says, looking for a layup. So Aldrich says, all right, I'll try. And she draws the foul instead to Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws coming up for Micah Aldrich. Might find it hard to believe when I say this, but that possession and any points they get out of it was created by Katie Kaufman when she led that break and backed it back out because she didn't have it. She'll get one better. You got to hit him for me to come true on that. <laughs> That's true. First one no good from Aldridge. Score remains 35-26 with three minutes to play. You know, Evan, you know, people talk all the time about culture. And, you know, people, I, when I worked at the OHSA, people would always ask me, how does OG do it? How do they do it? Because they're so good in everything. And, and it's hard to explain, but it's the culture. It's just starting with their administration, their principal. She does an awesome job. Um, it, it just, you know, when I say winning, it's not winning is expected, excellence is expected. Mm. Be the best you can be. And uh, again, I know other schools have that too, and I don't mean to be partial toward them, but it's just something that, you know, I always used to get that answer like, hey, OG's back. How they get back all the time? Well, you use the word excellence, you sound like a sport ethics professor. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing Mr. Snodgrass and I have in common. Yes, we do. That ball goes out. Last touched by Parkway, so the Titans will inbound from the baseline. And Evan, is there anything better than, you know, being able to teach that to, you know, especially to future uh, athletic directors, school administrators, things like that, to make a difference in our, you know, absolutely. that we can make a difference in them? That's, well, that's you're absolutely right, and you think, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it here. What's astounding to me, as Erford goes up, she's fouled and will shoot two free throws at the line. What's astounding to me is, when, when I teach at the undergrad level, you, you teach at the, the graduate level, but when I talk to first or second year students, most of them are athletes, and I ask them, what's the most important thing about sports? And college students are saying, well, you gotta win. Winning, yeah, correct, winning is most important, correct. right? And especially when you and I are in high school gyms all the time, you've done some great things for high school sports in the state. I can only hope to do a quarter of those things that you've done, but we got a timeout here taken by Parkway, but the most important thing about high school sports is not the win right. or the loss, right. is it? Nope. They're not going to play forever. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So a timeout taken, and it is a Lodix Jewelry timeout. We'll take it as well. Ten-point lead for the Titans. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. 
as that leaves free throw no good, but another offensive rebound by the Titans, still on the floor, a timeout called, and what more can you say about a team like this that just continues to hustle? They do. I mean, it's just, again, the physicalness and everything else, it's just unbelievable right now. It can't, and OG just cannot break away from it. And obviously that's good for your team when you're able to make a hustle play. But what people don't realize is how deflating it is for the other team Correct. that just gave up an offensive rebound, gave up a chance to dive on the loose floor and get a possession back. I mean, you're up against a team that not only is in your face constantly, but they're making the hustle plays and winning possessions. That's why I often talk about rebounding being such a key, not just because of another possession, but the def deflating attitude or the deflating, uh, deflating momentum that gives you on the other team. That's really tough. So the Titans come out of this Loudix Jewelry timeout with the ball, baseline out of bounds, and just like that, Erford off a of screen. Defense loses her, and she says thanks. Bruns quickly the other way. Bruns, nice pass, but what about the block? You know, Erford's really come through. She's averaging 12 a game. She has 13 on the night. You know, that's you need people to do what they're capable of doing. Katie Kaufman sending it back. Hughes tosses it outside for Shane Levin. Shane Levin with the left off the glass, no good, and a good box out by Carly Brinkman. That's what I was talking in the first half about. Some of those shots that OG has forced might as well be turnovers. I, you know what I mean? They're forcing them to throw up one on the left hand. And it's not the best shot you want, but it's all you can get. The timeout taken by Coach Yant. It's a Loudix Jewelry timeout. I want to thank Loudix Jewelry for their sponsorship of tonight's game, sponsoring our timeouts and each quarter this evening. We're in quarter four, and the Titans lead 38-26. want to remind you, you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere, for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Jerry, you have talked with many, many, many media outlets across this great state. I am a little biased, but WOSN has to be pretty close to the top in terms of their coverage. You know, I just said this a little bit ago about, you know, people ask about how does OG do it. People would ask me all the time, how does WOSN, it used to be TV 44, you know, how do they do it? And I said, well, one, our communities help make that happen. They advertise, and that, that does it. I mean, two, we have always tried to support the kids. We're not here to judge, you know, that's, that's a horrible play or anything like that, or this person's better than that person. We know the effort that they're giving, and it's worked for so many years for, T for WOSN and TV44. Thank you, the viewer, for tuning in, and thanks to all our sponsors for keeping things going here at the station so we continue to bring family-friendly sports programming to your homes, as well as Christian-centered programming. You know, we've got a 12-point differential, 12-point lead right now by OG, and if OG goes on to win this game, I know Coach Yant in his post-game is right, you know, like, I don't know what to say because there's never been a real flow of this game. A couple fast breaks early, and that's been about it. Yeah, absolutely, and, and you expect that with the physical nature you do. of the game and two hard-nosed defenses. Some length inside for the Titans as Kaufman alters that one if she didn't block it. Quickly ahead for Aldrich, but look how smart she is. She says, we don't need a basket right away. Let's slow down. Brinkman up top. Brinkman gets inside, then stops, pops it outside. You know, I like that about, you know, Katie Kaufman. She's got two points on the night. She got that ball on the end, on the side there, didn't force the issue, passed it right back out. She knew. That's impressive. We have a foul against Parkway, and that's going to put the Titans at the line. They are at five fouls for the quarter. And going back to that five-foul rule, as we have some Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws coming up, I don't know exactly what the intended purpose of the rule was, but I haven't felt a super big impact. Yeah, I agree. Watching yep. and yep. coaching um, and broadcasting, it just it's different, right. but it's not significantly right. different. 
you know, I don't know if it sped the game up. I don't know. You know, women's college has done it, I think, for a few years, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I don't know if it was intended to be like that. I don't know. I don't know. Stop and pop three, no good from Williamson, who's had a fantastic night. But the Titans started to catch on to what she likes to do, and sl they've slowed her down in the fourth quarter. That's a tough thing, too, you know, dribbling to your left a little bit and coming back as a right-hand shooter. Ball goes deep to Erford, and kind of a weird angle for that layup as she's not able to finish. But the rebound goes out of bounds. It stays with the Titans. The winner of this one will move on to take on the winner of our next game, Allen East and Delphus Jefferson, right here in Elida on Saturday. And that's a trip to the regional, and you know, part of that is I think OG last year, uh, their final run was against Margareta, who's still in, just as good as they were last year. And that was a game that took place right here in Elida. Yes. First free throw, good. Again, thank you to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for their sponsorship of our free throws this evening. Lee's in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Second free throw up, it goes. And that's Katie Coffin's fourth point of the night. All four coming from the free throw line. And what's crazy is that she's the leading scorer on this team. She's only scored four points, but her impact yes. has been so massive and so important for this Titan team as you see her box out and grab that one. Defensively, we've seen her alter shots and block shots. We've seen some offensive rebounds. Yep. So young kids, it's more than scoring, isn't it? It absolutely is. I know that you never see the headline of the paper that, you know, so-and-so altered 15 shots on the night. That's the <laughs> That's headline, true. creating uh -huh. a win, but it's the truth. Ball hits the deck. The Titans will have to cross half court, but they can stop after that as Brinkman brings it down, and the Titans will, I will say, escape with a the, win. I would this agree. was a hard-fought victory. And I know they're going to say that, too. 41-26, the final score. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to step aside. We'll be right back with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner when we return, and we'll wrap things up for this first game. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Elida in the Union Bank Court at the Elida Fieldhouse where the Titans of Ottawa Glendorf have beaten the Parkway Panthers 41-26. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page as we talked at the break and you look across the stat sheet and there are a lot of players doing a lot of great things. This is a tough decision, but ultimately, tonight going with number four, Carson Erford. And I think so much, not just because of the points, but what was asked of her to do. And, you know, all the, you know, they really took away Katie Kaufman on the inside, and, you know, she had to handle the ball, she had to rebound, and a lot asked of her, and she delivered. So a game where Parkway hung tough, stayed in there as long as they could, but ultimately, it's the Titans moving on to play in a district final, which is a place that they are certainly used to playing. Your final thoughts on this one? Well, you know, really, when you look at that first quarter score of, you know, 16-7, and so much of that was because of turnovers by Parkway, they hung tight the rest of the game. If you talk to Coach Ian after this game, he's going to say, I, I know he's going to say, I'm glad that's over with because it was so physical, no flow of the game, but that's because of how hard Parkway played. So, you know, again, those turnovers in the first quarter really hurt, and I think, you know, the defensive pressure, too, by OG when they had to. They took away Williamson, you know, when they needed to down the road. So, again, your final 41-26, the Titans win. Want to thank the Elida Athletic Department for their hospitality this evening. Still another game to go, but always want to take our chances to say thank you to them. Want to thank our sponsors, Ultimate Outdoor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Simplified Flooring, Loudix Jewelry, and Stolly Insurance. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Basketball on WOSN. For Jacob O'Neill on the camera and my partner, Jerry Snodgrass, I've been Evan Skilleter. Your final one more time, the Titans 41, the Panthers 26.
Have a great night, and God bless.